Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to take a moment and introduce a service called Zapple. I built Zapple to solve a problem that we run into when we want to deploy a static website. I don't want to introduce a whole backend stack just so I can have a contact form to send emails. Instead, Zapple saves me a lot of time and a lot of effort. I just integrate a Zapple form and I'm done. So let's take a look at how I do that. So here you can see the website from my company called Tech Foundry. And so this is just a static website. All this content, there's no database. It's just static pages. But here you can see that I have a contact form. So if I go to this contact form, I want this to be able to work. And at this point, it will work. If I send an email, for example, from a, a test, and I send this message, I will get redirected to this thank you page. And you can see this thank you page is part of Tech Foundry. So I posted an email, something happened in the background. I'll show you everything that happens in a second. Then I get redirected back here to a page on my website. So that's where we land. So normally to make that work, you would integrate your backend stack with maybe a service like, uh, for example, Mailgun. So Mailgun is a phenomenal service. I actually use it as the backend for Zapple, but there's a lot of setup to get through in order to be able to send email reliably using a service like Mailgun. And they'll take you through all those steps for example, you have to set up your domains, and once you get your domain set up, you have to do a DNS check. You have to create a number of DNS records just so you can verify your domain. Once it's verified, then your domain can reliably send email through Mailgun. Now that's the first step. Once you have Mailgun set up, now you have to integrate with Mailgun. Now if you have a backend, for example, you want PHP or something like that, you know, they have an example of how you can send email through PHP using their Mailgun API. And it's not a big deal, but again, you have to have a backend for this. Or if you're running a stack like WordPress, which again is PHP in the backend, I've used this plugin for a number of years, WP Mail SMTP, you can integrate uh, this plugin to send email through the Mailgun API. And once you've completed that integration, you have the ability for uh, people to submit a contact form and you would end up with that email. But to do it reliably, there's a few more things you have to do. Uh, when that contact form is initially submitted, you probably want to enter that data into a database. So you have a row in the database. So now you don't lose that data if, for example, your PHP process has a problem sending the email the first time. Speaking of the first time, if it fails the first time, you probably want to introduce some retry mechanism to send it a second time. And then the last thing that a lot of times we have to consider are external integration. So I want this data not to just to come back to me in the form of an email, but I want this data to flow to some other service. So Zapple will take care of all of that for it. So now let's take a look at Zapple and see how we integrate this into our website. Here's the Zapple marketing page. I'm already logged in, so I'm going to go up to projects here. And you can see I have three projects. Um, the one that we're going to look at is Tech Foundry. And if I look at the configuration for Tech Foundry, the project itself is pretty simple. There's just a name. And the second bit of information you provide is the allowed domains. And so here you can see for Tech Foundry, the domain is techfoundry.com. That's the domain I'm expecting submissions to come from. When data is submitted to Zapple, we can reject it right away based upon if it came from the expected domains. And that's one way that we keep the, the data set for your project clean. Next thing I want to look at is the My Forms area. And you can see for Tech Foundry, I just have a single form. In the future, I could add additional forms if I wanted. So every project can have multiple forms. So you can imagine right now I have a standard contact form, but in the future, maybe I want to allow visitors to uh, set up appointments. And so maybe I have like a calendar and a time slot and, and they can submit a request for an appointment. So that would be a different type of form. So in the future, I could add additional forms, but for now, I just have a single form for this project. And let's take a look at the configuration for that form. Here you can see the data that we collect when we build a form. So you can see it has a name. And then after that, all of the rest of the fields are, what do you want to have happen after the user or the visitor on your site submits the data? So first thing is you can forward it to as many email addresses as you want. So obviously the contact form on the Tech Foundry website, I forward that to my Tech Foundry email address. You can also block email addresses. If I'm getting a lot of spam from some hacker at botnet.com, I want to block them. I can just enter uh, those emails here. And then those will be rejected. As we analyze the incoming submissions, they have to go through a number of security gates. And if it's coming from one of these 
uh, blocked emails, we will reject it. The next thing that you can configure is a lot of times we want external integrations to happen. And I want to take my data from my contact form and I want to send it off to Slack or send it off to uh, some other service. And so using webhooks, which are really powerful, uh, you can integrate Zapple with some uh, external services. And in fact, if you take a look at the help page and you come down to the Zapier integration, there's a whole section on how you can use those webhooks and build an integration with Zapier that sends your submission data over to, for example, uh, a Slack channel. And then the next parts are grouped together. So what happens if the submission is successful? Where does your end user land? If you remember from the experience of the visitor, they just clicked it, they clicked the submit button. And what happens next? So if the submission was successful, then you can either send them to a custom page, which is what I did here for Tech Foundry. They're going right back to the Tech Foundry website and they're going to the contact slash thanks page. Uh, if the submission fails, then we're going to stick around in the Zapple side of things and we're just going to display the default Zapple page. And then the last bit is something I recommend always is integrate with reCAPTCHA. A reCAPTCHA will significantly decrease the amount of spam that you're getting on any inbox. And so I highly recommend that you get a reCAPTCHA key from Google. And if you check out the help section, you can see reCAPTCHA integration here. It talks about all the different steps. It gives you the links to the Google websites and everything you need to do in order to uh, integrate with reCAPTCHA. All right, with all of that said, let's look at the integration on Tech Foundry. It's really super simple. There's only a couple of steps. The first thing we do is we embed this analytics beacon. So what this analytics beacon is, it's a little bit of JavaScript and it allows Zapple to collect page visit data. So how many times did this particular user visit this page? How much time did they spend on the page? What page did they go to after they visited page A? Did they go to B or they went to C? So Zapple does a, a little bit deeper analysis on this page visit data and can show you some interesting results. And so you wanna integrate this beacon on your layout page. So on my Next.js, I have a layout and it's right here. And you can see at the very bottom, I have a Next.js script tag where I'm embedding the Zapple beacon. And that beacon is exactly the same thing that you'll see here. And so that's all I needed to do in order to get this beacon embedded on my Tech Foundry page. So next I have to get the form embedded. So I go back to the forms and I select this embed link. Um, I'm gonna see exactly what I need to do to embed the form. So I come over to my contact form, which you can see here, and here's the form tag. And what I need to do to embed Zapple is I simply change the action from whatever it would have been to the Zapple action here. And so you can see that has been changed right there. This line of code would normally be something like HTTPS colon slash slash for my particular website, this is techfoundry.com slash contact form. And I would post back to you know, my own website. But because Zapple's handling all of the data, you can just change this action to the Zapple endpoint and Zapple will handle the submission for you. That's really it for the Zapple integration, but I am gonna show you the reCAPTCHA integration because I think it's so important that you put reCAPTCHA on your website. It'll just save you a lot of headaches. So in order to integrate reCAPTCHA, after you get your API keys, there is a client side and there's a secret side. So you're gonna provide your reCAPTCHA secret key as part of uh, your setup for your form. And then on your form, you're gonna give it an ID, which we'll use a little bit later in some script. And if I scroll down to find the button, here's the button. So this button has an extra class, g-reCAPTCHA. So the JavaScript that Google provides is gonna use that class to intercept your button click and do all the reCAPTCHA processing uh, before it actually submits it to your website. You have to add a GDAS reCAPTCHA to your class. And also on that button, you have to set the site key as some data. And then you have to set these other two actions here. So there's a callback and then there's an the action. Now this on submit callback is some JavaScript that you can see down here. And so that's it with the button. So just to summarize, you have to add a reCAPTCHA class. You have to set the site key, the callback, and the action method. At the very bottom, you can see two more 
script tags. And again, these are Next.js script tags, so the capital S out front. Um, but we're loading in the recaptcha script from Google. And then there's this, this function here that actually does the submission once Google recaptcha finishes its analysis. And so it's all wired up. This is all you need to do in order to get recaptcha to work. So now that we got everything wired up, let's go ahead and do that form submission again. So I'm gonna enter an example email. Let's say this is from uh, John Smith at example.com. That's perfect. And we're just gonna say this is a test. And this is um, you know testing during the video. So we'll send this message. Again, when I click submit, it's gonna send the data to Zapple. And so what we're gonna see is we're gonna land back here on the thank you page, which is how we configured it. Now, if I go to my Zapple form again, so here's my form and I go to view this, I look in the inbox and I have one message here from the inbox. And I can click that message and I can see that the subject was test and test during the video. So you can see all that information. You can also see things like the metadata from the user agent, you know, where it was sent from, the source, the referrer URL, all of this kind of content is here for you also. And then you can manage this much like your inbox. So I can take this and I can delete this because this is just you know, an example. So I can click the delete button. And so it's no longer in my inbox, it's in my deleted inbox here. So now I can, if I need to, I can go back and look at it again. So in addition to getting a copy of this here inside of Zapple, if you recall, we actually had this forwarded over to my real inbox. So you can see it here now. Um, this is my Tech Foundry email address, and you can see J Smith example test uh, test during the video, and I can click this to go into Zapple and, and see that data inside Zapple. So at this point, Zapple's integrated into my static website. I didn't have to have a backend for it. And so that's it. So Zapple will act just like a, a normal inbox for you. Uh, you do get other benefits though. Some of the big ones that I didn't cover in this video revolve around all the analytics. We installed that beacon. So now you get page visit data. So you know if a user went from page A to page B or did they go from page A to page C? And so you can see kind of all the conversions between the different pages. You can get all your page visit numbers, how many unique visits per day on every page. You can also get information about spam, you know, how much information or how much your submissions were spam, uh, how many of them were actual data. So a lot of information here in the analytics that we didn't cover today. But if you have any questions on Zapple, go ahead and use the contact form on zapple.com um, and it's powered by Zapple itself. So you can hit me up. I will happy to answer any questions that you might have. And there is like a five-day free trial, so go ahead and sign up and, and give it a try.